Hello family, once again, this is a, your YouTube professor, Dr. Naftri Gathemba, with another learning episode on uh, structural dynamics. Today, we are also going to solve uh, a simple problem on single degree of freedom cases, where there is a problem that you are given here. And uh, this is a problem again, an exam time question, where you order maybe five marks. So sit back, relax, take your pen, let's dive in. So if you have never subscribed this channel, uh, kindly do so. Click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, so that anytime I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you. Let's start. So a problem reads, a uh, point one by point five five by six meters beam has a 20 newton mass as per its mid span by a means of a spring of stiffness k is equals to uh, 40 newtons per millimeter. Uh, the modulus of elasticity for the beam is 2.1 times 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter squared. If you neglect the mass of the beam, you are required to compute the natural frequency of the system when subjected to free vibration. Again, a very simple problem. Let's see the steps for solving this. First, always visualize your problem. So you're given a beam, 6 meters at the mid span. There is a spring suspended, a mass of 20 newtons, and a spring uh, by means of a spring of stiffness 40 newtons per millimeter. Again, we want to see what is it that you are given. You're given for the beam, you're given the length is 6 meters, the blade is uh, 0.1, and uh, the depth is 0.15, and the modulus of elasticity for the beam is as given. For the spring, you are given K is equal to 40 newton per millimeter. And for the overall system, we know that uh, the weight is 20 newton because you are supposed to neglect the mass of the beam. So we are required to obtain the natural frequency of the system. So if you are told natural frequency, it's better to go up to the head, getting the F. Because if you stop at the stage just where you are calculating the angular frequency omega, you might not have gotten to the end of the problem. So let's see. So looking at the problem, uh, of course, we have the physical system. It's always good now to visualize how the dynamic system will be. You see, if you look at this problem here, you realize that uh, because of the spring that is pulling down one here, our motion. So the direction of our motion is in this way. So if you can call it u or y of x, direction u, displacement u. So the beam, uh, this is simply supported. So this is what we expect to be the deformation shape. Uh -huh. So you see there is the deflection occurring over the beam. And also because of these uh, mass suspended here, there will be the uh, erogation of the spring. So it's kind of the behavior of this system is like two springs. We can represent the beam using a spring. It's kind of uh, a spring the beam erogates, right? And then there is another spring that is attached, the one now that's suspending the mass. And in this case, we have the mass here. So you see, it's like two springs in series. Aha, I know now, now your mind have been uh, uh, refreshed. So two springs in series, spring one with the stiffness K1, but this one, let's call it K beam. This one, we call it K spring or one and two, right? They are in series. So you have visualized from the physical uh, system a model to a dynamic uh, uh, representation of your vibrating system, okay? And of course, you know when the uh, springs are in series, what happens? If you want to get the equivalent stiffness for the overall system, we have the equivalent will be 1k1 or k spring plus 1 of a k beam, okay? So with this in mind now, you're good to go. Yeah, so because we, once you get the stiffness of the system, we can be able to obtain what is the angular frequency, right? Because we have the mass or the weight, because you're giving this as Newton is weight. So we know this will be K of, uh, of course, now weight times G, right? So we needed what is required in this question is how to obtain the stiffness K. Everything else is straightforward. Let's see. So again, I think I needed to have erased this so that we use this space. So you are to recall these formulas. Of course, the one that I was writing here, this they guide you. Once you, 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 you look at the problem, what is given, you start now visualizing what are these formulas I need to use. Because it becomes very, very interesting and absurd to see somebody now using formulas not related with anything. 
like data here you start using formulas which are way outside the scope so you look at what is given what this problem ask and then at the back of your mind you bring to remembrance the typical uh, formulas uh, that uh, we needed or that are required for this uh, uh, particular issue so equivalence spring non constant i've already already given that and how to rearrange it to make a the subject so let's move ahead and get the the equivalent stiffness constant ke so if you are to get k1 and k2 k beam and k spring how do you get the k for the beam look at this eh? we are given the beam and uh this is now another trick that uh, i mean another test that you are being required to know you're given the beam you're given the cross section right you're given the breadth of this this is uh 100 millimeters you are told the depth is 150 millimeters and the, the leg is 6000 millimeters or six meters okay remember you have to be consistent with the units eh? and uh in this case now for the beam which is simply supported we know of course uh k is derived remember the expression f is equals to k times delta right it's always good to know where we obtain these things from or k is equals to f over uh delta i know from your uh, previous learning you have you know or you can even get some tables you can google to get some tabulation of uh, the diffraction for different uh, support system for beams so in this case you always get uh diffraction you have a uh, um mm, or something like that of a 48 ei so in this case k our k is given us by 48 ei of l cubed note the support is simply supported and that's why we know that k for the beam here will be 48 uh, ei over l cubed what you need to obtain now here is i i for the beam because it's not given e the angst modulus is given so i in this case is b d cubed over 12. b is 100 d is 150 over 12 and with that you are good to go you can be able now to resolve your problem quite easily once you understand what is uh, required of you all right so we go right ahead k for the beam is 48 i of l cubed and i is b so look at this this is where we have the b d cubed over 12 then 48 e is given the angst modulus l cubed is 6000 meter be very careful and cautious about the consistency of units right and then solving that you get kb is 13 12.5 newton per millimeter for the spring we are given so basically we just need to use the formula for the spring in series combination combined spring in series series we just know that is k1 times k2 over k1 plus k2 remember this is just rearrangement of where we started with right we started with one over ke one of a ke is equals to one of a k beam plus one of a k spring and then if you rearrange this is just k beam plus k spring over k beam top is times eh? k beam plus k spring okay good uh with that we have obtained the ke so we wanted to calculate what is the system frequency so f right so omega is given by 1.38 or 38.82 times 9.8 over 20 which is equals to that and then finally we can be able to get what is f so thank you that's it it was a simple simple question uh simple solution but I can see you can as you can see you needed to refresh some basic concepts. So that's the end of that. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. Remember you can be able to download the working here in Word doc, in a PDF document. Uh, if you go to the description uh, in the a link in the description will be left. You can click there and go and download. Uh, continue subscribing, liking, sharing the video as we reach more audience. Thank you.